Good afternoon everybody, Calm Biker here taking the opportunity on this chilly afternoon to come out for a ride and make a little video and visit a place where oh, I keep looking at these fields are full of water visit a place where I might be going to get muddy or I might have to wuss out and uh, avoid getting muddy that said I have just in case got my walking boots in my top box as well as my drone I'm not sure if I'm going to get a chance to fly it and whether it'd be worth it but for the place I'm coming to visit but um, you know what's the uh, the old uh, scout scout phrase be prepared something along those lines dib 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 <laughs> um, I thought I'd come to a place that's got a bit of a spooky story or three around it uh, seen as we're heading up to Halloween maybe I'll publish this one on Halloween I'm going to a place called Willy Howe Mound and I'm taking the uh, slow and uh, chilled out road to it that I've never been down well I've been down some of them before but I don't know the route so I've got the sat nav on but I, uh, I need to do something about the brightness of that screen I have to kind of shadow it to see where the pink line goes next I'm going to Willy How Mound with Graham, he's behind me on his NT1100 Gizmo me on the CB500X Tomato uh, Gizmo and Tomato Willy How Mound, it's a bit like a video that I've just put up because I'm recording this a couple of weeks ahead of Halloween uh, and I've recently uploaded a video of the Lady of the North in a way it's a bit like that it's a big mound of earth it's not nearly as big Lady of the North one and a half million tons this one is about 20 foot high it's got some trees on it but this one is what you call a round barrow which basically is it's a man-made hill and often used as a burial ground so you'd find remains there and what they call grave goods things that have been buried with the dead this mound has been uh, it's, it's prehistoric nobody knows when it when it was made you know, probably thousands of years ago but it has been dug up a few times over the last few centuries uh, and nobody's actually found any remains or any grave goods so they were probably quite disappointed not to find anything of value for uh, people who are into that kind of thing um, it does mean that it's no longer a hemisphere as it was it's now kind of got a donut shape to it but it has got a few interesting stories around it that I thought I would uh, tell for Halloween I get past these cyclists um, there's a couple of really simple stories around it so there's one story of uh, a man who uh, a fairy, a female fairy, fell in love with him and she told him that um, as they were lovers he could go to the mound every day and he would find there a gold guinea but he mustn't tell anybody so every day in the morning he would go to the mound and there would be this gold guinea and he would take it obviously the opportunity then to become a very rich man and whatnot and be in love with a fairy um, but as the story goes after a while he couldn't keep the secret anymore and he told his best friend and the following day he went to go and get his guinea and it wasn't there and then um, soon after all of the fairy folk turned up and he was as it was said in the story severely punished which I think is code for severely beaten <laughs> by all of the fairies fairies we're talking about there the fairy folk is not um, we're not talking uh, you know, Disney fairies, six inches high, Tinkerbell type stuff. We're talking um, True Blood st style fairies. <laughs> Suki, not uh, not Tinkerbell, with martial arts training or something similar. So that was one of the simpler stories. Another story was uh, a man that was walking past. Um, for some reason decided he would go and have a look up this hill 
see what he could see and on top he found a chest full of treasure let's make sure yep graham has seen which way i've gone this is by no means a direct route it's all over the place but i'm trying to avoid any main roads yes yeah, so he found this chest of treasure but it was immovable not very kind so he was slightly disappointed that uh, he couldn't take the treasure away with him so those are the kind of two little stories got to be careful on this one you often get tractors coming out of here and you only see them when you get alongside and suddenly a tractor comes out from behind the uh, building definitely want to give a wide berth to yeah the main story is um, a little bit more complicated and apparently gave rise to the term the fairy cup story um, fairy as in the fairy creatures not not anything rude um, and I'm just making sure Graham is following before I carry on with the story I lost him oh, there he is So yeah, the, uh, the fairy cup story, this is the, the kind of the big one that um, has been well documented. Now the way that it was told the first time didn't involve fairies, but later fairies were added to it. And I'm sure those who are of a disposition to like their UFO stories would probably uh, bring it into the kind of the UFO mythology as well alien visitors that kind of thing but it was originally recorded in the 1100s and it was a man who was returning to his home after having some drinks i think the drinks might have had something to do with it <laughs> but he was returning home after having some drinks at a local hostelry on his horse and he was passing willie howe mound and as he passed he could hear the sounds of revelry hear a party going on and he thought well that's very odd we're in the middle of nowhere so he got off his horse and he went over to the mound to see if he could see what was going on and as he approached the mound he noticed a doorway in the earth and he peered inside and inside there was a banquet hall all laid out with a banquet and the place was all well lit and it was half full of strange folk those are the folk that later became fairies and he was invited in by one of the revelers who uh, offered him a drink and gave him a cup full of a mysterious drink but he was a bit wary he wasn't sure what it was that he was being asked to drink and he got scared so he went outside the mound with his cup and he threw the drink onto the floor but he was spotted doing so and that angered the revellers so the man jumped on his horse and galloped off and he was chased by all of the people from the banquet all of the strange folk but luckily for him he got away uh, and the only thing he had to show for it to prove that something weird had happened was the cup now apparently the cup was made out of a material that nobody could actually recognize as any material of the time and it was a strange colour, it was a strange shape, still a cup shape, but a very strange cup. And everything about it was very odd. And apparently that, that cup was given, it was passed from person to person, and eventually uh, to Henry I, who owned the cup, and it got passed uh, down the royal line. Who knows, maybe King Charles still has the magic cup, or the unusual cup don't mind us um, but yeah and he, he escaped without a severe beating from the fairies but this strange story that then has uh, been told and passed down and down for well now about 850 years with the telling I've just done <laughs> so anyway I'm off to see the mound see if there are any fairy folk there if there are Obviously, I'll, I'll edit them out because if they offer me a gold coin every day for the rest of my uh, my days, as long as I don't tell anyone about it, I'm, I'm obviously not going to tell you about it. If you ask if I got one, I'm going to say no. 
I'm winking inside my helmet, you know? <laughs> I mean, the only way you'll be able to tell is if in a few videos time I've moved house to a house with a bigger garage and there's 15 bikes in it <laughs> well, I should say as well about where it is I've mentioned it's in a place or on just north of a place called Thwing which sounds like a sounds like a toy you'd play on in the garden if you were a Roald Dahl character with a lisp um, it's actually a little bit northwest of the um, the big stone I showed you, um, the big big stone in the churchyard, which for some reason the name has completely escaped me, must be the, the little people making it, making it go away. Rudston Monolith, there you go, it came back. Rudston Monolith, I've done a video about that in the past. And it's also, it's the only barrow that, uh, that is actually on the route of the Gypsy Race, which I also mentioned during the same video. That's the uh, waterway that meanders a very strange path and uh, often disappears entirely and when it's in flood they call it the war waters and when it's in flood it's indicative of something bad about to happen. It wouldn't surprise me if it's burst its banks with what's going on in the world at the moment. If it's like this when I get there, even my walking boots are not going to help. Hmm. Ickle bit of flooding. I really dislike this kind of thing. Just don't know where that next pothole is. Luckily, didn't find one. I think Graham might have be cheating and taking the pavement. <laughs> Get me brakes dried. <laughs> My legs are all wet. <laughs> I got wet legs. I've got summer boots on. <laughs> well, that's the I, I thought about it. <laughs> I was going through it thinking, I hope I don't find a pothole. <laughs> I, I've had visions of me doing another dot there. <laughs> that's when the balance lets me down. Right. I had, I had visions of finding a pothole and just disappearing. I know, I know. <laughs> but you've got your camera on, it would have made a good video, wouldn't it? <laughs> and then 30 seconds later, <laughs> completely dry. Nearly there now, we're at Thwing. So it's just up the road from here. Four miles according to the uh, Kalimutu. For me this is a, a new route and uh, quite fun. I'm, I'm wondering whether Graham will be thinking, why has he gone that way? Because <laughs> Graham knows all of these roads a lot better than I do. It's probably one of those places that appeals to me but on video is just some trees and a bit of mud but hopefully the story or the stories of the fairy folk make a video worthwhile and even if it doesn't it's my channel I'll do what I like <laughs> I think it might be that group of trees there only because I can see a mound underneath it. I think that might be the one. And this bridge here is crossing the Gypsy Race. Is it in flood? Doesn't look like it. We might be alright after all. That's it! <laughs> it's a lump of air! <laughs> I just said on the video um, it might not be that good for a video it might just be a lump of air
dirty bike. <laughs> Dry feet. <laughs> Not for me, very wet legs. <laughs> I've got a dirty bike too. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, yeah, it's not that exciting for video, but you can see how up the side there, it used to go across. Um, and they're actually, one of the excavations that they did, because it's been excavated a few times, they've never found any remains or anything like that, but one of the excavations took a piece out of the middle, one created a ramp. I was hoping to walk over to it, but they've planted a new crop, so um, unless I can see a route that doesn't involve walking on a crop, I'm not going to. Don't want to do any damage to the farmer's crops but um, you can see how it's because it's a protected monument I guess it's um, it is protected so you're not allowed to do anything to it so the trees get to stay there and these are probably quite old trees the mound itself probably thousands of years old not enough sure could could easily be Bronze Age though but I thought uh, for me it's interesting and hopefully the story was for you i can't see a door right now i can't see a door but i'm going to put a drone around the other side maybe the door's there really is the middle of nowhere isn't it lovely and peaceful little bit of drone footage very windy very bad uh, GPS signal probably from the RAF base that's just down the way uh, out of any uh, area where we shouldn't be flying of course but um, hopefully you enjoyed that hopefully you enjoyed the story I've just been chatting with Graham and chap who owns the farm down the way who's out walking his dogs slight surprise when you fly in a drone to suddenly find a dog's nose stick out from between your legs but there you go so, so i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching everyone ride safe and i'll talk to you all again soon